I'm often asked about what brushes one should use as a beginner. In today's video, I will be attempting to answer all the basic questions a beginner would have about how to choose the right brush. I would also be reviewing three sets of brushes so you can see what you need to watch out for when you're choosing your brushes. Let's take a quick look at the anatomy of a brush. A typical brush has a handle, a ferrule, a crimp that connects the ferrule to the handle. Then of course, there are bristles, which is further split into the belly and a tip. The bristle of your brush may be made of natural hair like Kolinsky, Sable, Finch, Mongoose hair, etc. or made entirely of synthetic hair. You also get brushes which is made with a combination of natural hair and synthetic hair. The brush that you finally choose would largely depend on the medium that you prefer. For instance, if watercolour is the medium of your preference, these are the qualities that you need to have in your brushes. 1. The brush should be able to hold a good amount of paint because going back and forth to pick up paints can cause unnecessary backwash or blooms in your painting. 2. The brush should be able to hold a good sharp point at its tip. 3. It should be capable of springing back into shape after being bent. For these reasons, watercolour artists do prefer to use natural hair brushes like Sable and Kolinsky, but the fact remains that these brushes are not only hard to find but are also extremely expensive. So for practical reason, it does make sense to use synthetic hair brushes that imitate the properties of these natural hair brushes. When it comes to acrylic paints, since this medium is much more harsher on the brushes, I prefer to skip the natural hair brushes altogether and opt for good sturdy synthetic hair brushes. Acrylic paints dry faster and it's necessary to keep your brush immersed in water longer and may even require you to use soapy water to rinse out the paints. The fragile natural brushes are just not able to handle this rough treatment, so synthetic brushes make a better option to use with acrylic paints. When it comes to oil paints, artists prefer to use hog hair brush because these are sturdy yet springy and this property helps to push the paints into the grooves of the canvas. The hog hair also has a natural split end which increases the amount of paint that it can hold. Personally, I prefer to use the hog hair brush for the first few layers of the paint but eventually I move on to synthetic hair because it helps me to control the paints better and helps me to give finer details to my paintings. One thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to keep separate set of brushes for each medium that you use. If you end up using the same set of brushes for different mediums, you will end up not only ruining your brushes but also your painting. Now that we have covered all the basics about brushes, let's see what are the brushes one should use as a beginner. Two of the most commonly used brushes are the round brush and the flat brush. Here I have a set of 7 round brushes by Fine Art and a set of 4 flat brushes by Faber-Castell. Both these sets have brushes made of synthetic hair and are good to use for all three mediums. I bought these brushes from the Amazon site based on great reviews and the fact that they are reasonably priced. I would also be reviewing the Sitaram Special Effect brushes of 10, which can be purchased from their online store. Let's review these brushes and see if it's worth buying them. First up is the Fine Art Round Brush Set of 7. This is currently priced at Rs. 370. The size of brushes included in the set are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and 12. Personally, I feel that you don't really need so many round brushes because in a typical painting, you'd not use more than three or four brushes. But as a beginner, it's not a bad idea to try out few sizes to see what size you're most comfortable using. Also, the size of the brush you would use would depend on the size of your painting too. The handle of these brushes is made of plastic and the ferrule is made of anti-rust metal. Since this is a new brush, there is a starch coating to protect the bristle, so you need to break into it first. Start by removing the plastic cover wherever provided. Now gently move the bristles back and forth to loosen the starch. Soak the brush in slightly warm water and squeeze the hair with your fingers starting from the ferrule and moving down to the tip. Do this a couple of times till you're satisfied that the starch is removed. Gently dry with an absorbent tissue. A round brush is very versatile. You can use it to lay out a thin line or a thick line by varying the pressure applied on the brush. It can also be used to make many interesting marks. In fact, you can easily do a complete painting with just a round brush. 
This is a quick demo to show you the range of strokes that these different sized brushes can offer. This is my opinion after testing out the fine art round brushes. The tip holds up pretty well and the brush is able to spring back to its original form. However, while a bigger size brush like this is able to hold a reasonable amount of paint, the smaller brushes tend to run out of paint quickly. Let me show you a demo of a sable brush vis-a-vis -a, -vis a synthetic brush to highlight this difference. In this demo, you will see that I keep going back and forth several times to pick up paint with a synthetic brush, but this is not the case with a sable hair brush. The sable hair brush also gives a much cleaner stroke. Next up is the Faber-Castell flat brushes. This set of four is available at rupees 140. The brush sizes included in the set are 1, 2, 4 and 6. The handle of the brushes is made of wood and the ferrule is made of anti-rust metal. A few flat brushes is good to have in your collection in addition to the round brushes. These are especially great to cover large areas quickly and effortlessly. You can also use the flat brush to make interesting strokes that are harder to achieve with a round brush. Let's see the marks that can be made with these Faber-Castell brushes. The Faber-Castell flat brushes are made of good quality synthetic fibers and these soft bristles holds up really well. The wooden handle and metal ferrules are sturdy and overall these brushes are good for beginners as well as professionals. Next is the Sitaram Special Effect Brush Set of 10. This contains 10 brushes, each having unique bristles that allows artists to create interesting and distinctive strokes in their artwork. This set is currently available at Rs. 650. The handle is made of wood, the ferrule is made of anti-rust metal and has a rose gold sheen to it. The bristles are of high quality synthetic hair. The first brush is a number zero script liner. The ferrule is round and the bristles are long and thin. These are used to create long thin strokes and curves. It can hold a lot of paints and the line weight can be varied with brush pressure. These are also great for lettering, calligraphy and can be even used for signing one's paintings. Next up is the number six dagger brush. The ferrule is flat and the tip is cut at an angle. This is quite a versatile brush and is favoured by many artists. It can make thin strokes like a rigger and big flat strokes like a flat brush and it can also make a lot of other expressive strokes. Next we have is the number one deer foot. This has a round ferrule and the tip is cut at an angle. This is basically a variant of a stippling brush and creates lovely textures. It's great to depict fur, foliage, trees, grass and even clouds and works best when it's not too wet. Then we have a number 12 fan brush. As you can see, the bristles are spread out like a fan. Fan brushes are generally used for blending and feathering colours. Fan brushes can also be used for painting trees, branches, grasses and even depicting strands of hair. Then we have a number 2 cat's tongue. It's got a flat ferrule and a pointed tip, allowing one to paint finer details. These are great to paint leaves and foliage. Moving on, we have a number two short fill wood. This has a flat ferrule and a rounded tip. This again is a very versatile brush and can be used to make a variety of marks. These are especially popular among floral artists and can be used to make lovely floral patterns and leaves. These are also great for blending. Next we have is a number 10 notch brush. This has a flat ferrule and a tip that is cut to a V shape. This brush can create many interesting strokes that can be used for painting grass, hair, feather, fur, tree trunks, etc. Then we have a number 10 round reservoir brush. This has a thick round ferrule and a very long bristle. This brush is ideal when you want to cover large areas on the paintings without having to go back to keep picking up more colour. This is best used with really wet paint. And of course the tip can be used to create variety of other strokes and textures too. The next brush is a number 12 comb brush. This has a flat ferrule and the tip is shaped like a comb. This may be used for painting human hair, animal hair, animal fur, bird feathers, grass, leaves, bushes, etc. 
The last brush we have is a number 12 Hague brush. This too has a flat ferrule and the tip is cut in an irregular pattern. This is great to use for dry brush technique and may be used to depict hair, fur, grass, bushes, etc. Overall, I think this is a great set of brushes to add to your collection. The variety of strokes and textures that can be created with these brushes are sure to bring a distinctive quality to your painting. I think the synthetic brushes that I reviewed today make great first-time brushes for beginners. They're made of good quality fibers and they're reasonably priced. But I do hope that as you gain confidence as artists, you will start investing in better quality brushes. I'm certain you'll see a remarkable difference in your painting style. I really hope that this video helped to address some basic questions about art brushes. If you enjoyed this video, do click the like button and do subscribe to my channel to see a new art supply review every Wednesday.